Hey, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to get started with AG Charts for React by building a chart that looks just like this. All of the useful links, like the source code, are in the description. So let's get started. First, let's create a new project using the React template from Vite. We'll call this My App. Next, navigate into the new directory and run npm install to install the required dependencies. Whilst we're here, we can also install the AG Charts React library, which is what we'll be showing you how to use today. Finally, run npm run dev, and we should see the basic Vite and React template now being displayed on the right. Next, let's clean up the boilerplate. Navigate into the source folder and remove the CSS files. Open the main JSX file and remove the CSS import. And then open the app JSX file, remove these imports, remove this one variable, and then remove all of this boilerplate code as well. Now that our project's ready, let's start to build the chart. First, import the AG Charts React library from AG Charts and declare a single variable called chart options. We're going to wrap this in a use state hook so that it can be updated later. This chart options object will contain all of our configuration for our chart. This will include things like the data, the different series types, our axes configuration, and so on and so forth. There are a ton of different properties that you can use to configure your charts with AG Charts. Take a look at the documentation for a full list. All that's left to do now is return the AG Charts React component, making sure to pass through the chart options object to the options property. And we can save our file and we can see that the chart is being displayed, or at least a placeholder for the chart, and that's expected because we haven't configured anything just yet. Let's begin configuring our chart by starting with a very simple example. First, set the height property to 1000 and then save the file and you should see that the placeholder for the chart is now hard-coded at 1000 pixels. Next, let's introduce some data to our chart. Here's some that I've prepared earlier. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to be building a bar and line combination chart to visualize the correlation between ice cream sales and the average temperature of any given month. A very contrived example, but nice and simple nonetheless. You'll probably have noticed that even though we've provided data to our chart, nothing's been displayed yet. And that's because we haven't told the chart how we want that data to be displayed. In order to do this, we need to introduce the series property. The series property takes an array of objects where each object defines a single series. That series will then be displayed on the chart. Let's start by creating our first object. We'll give it a type of bar, saying that we want to build a bar chart. We'll set the X key as the month, so that we'll display the month along the X axis. And then we'll set the Y key as ice cream cells, so that we can display the number of ice cream cells on the Y axis. As you can see, we now have a very basic bar chart that's displaying the number of ice cream cells across every single month. We could just leave this here, but of course we're going to take it a step further, and that's by introducing an additional series to turn this into a combination chart. So let's do the same thing that we did previously, this time setting the type as line. We'll use the same X key because we want to use the month along the X axis, but this time we'll use average temp as our Y key so that we can display the temperature along the same axis as the ice cream sales. As you can see, we now have an additional line series plotting the average temperature per month on the Y axis. We also have a legend that's been introduced that we can use to toggle this additional series type on and off. You'll probably notice that the line series type looks like it's just running along at zero. This isn't the case, but because our data sets are on two completely different scales, the line chart looks very small in comparison to the bar chart. Let's fix this by introducing a secondary axis to display the average temperature on in comparison to the ice cream sales. So let's start by introducing the axis property, which in this case will be an array because we can configure multiple axes. We'll start by configuring the bottom axis, so we'll set the position to bottom. And because we're displaying the month along the X or bottom axis, then we can set the type as category because month is a categorical data type. Next, let's configure the left axis. So we'll set the position of this one to the left. And then because we're displaying the number of ice cream sales on the left hand side axis, we'll set the type to number. And then we'll provide the keys property and set this to ice cream sales, essentially telling the chart we would like to display the number of ice cream sales on the left hand side y axis. All that's left to do is the exact same thing, but for the right hand side axis for the average temp values. So we'll change position to right and we'll change the keys to average temp. So essentially what we've done here is we've configured the bottom axis 
the left axis and the right axis, and now when we hit save, we should see that the average temperature is now plotted on the right hand side or secondary axis, and that makes the visual comparison much easier and much more intuitive. Next, let's start styling the chart. First, let's start with the title. We'll add the title property and we'll set the text property of the title property to ice cream sales and average temperature. We can do the exact same thing for the subtitle and we'll set this to 2022 data. We can now see that the title and subtitle are displaying on the right hand side just above the chart. Next, let's take a look at the legend. Let's configure its position so that instead of beneath the chart, it displays on the right. We'll do this through the position property and we'll set this to right. Next, wouldn't it be nice if rather than taking the value name from the data directly, we had a more human readable name that we could use? Well, we can do this with the Y name property inside each series. Let's start with the ice cream sales by setting the Y name property to ice cream sales. We can see there now that that's been updated and the chart is now using the name property above the key property. We'll do the exact same thing for average temp and we can see that that's been updated as well. The last thing that we're going to do in this tutorial is format the axes. As you can see from the example on the right hand side, the axes are currently just displaying the values directly from the data. But wouldn't it be nice if these were formatted, for example, to show whether the temperature was in Celsius or Fahrenheit? We can do this by introducing an additional property to our axes called label and then passing a formatter function through to the label so that we can format the axes before that they're displayed on the chart. Let's take a look at this. First thing that we're going to want to do is introduce the label property on the average temperature axes and then add the additional formatter property. We can then start to write our function. Every formatter will receive params which contain information about the axes itself. So in this case, we can return the params.value and we can see that nothing changes. We want to append degrees Celsius to each value so that the user can easily see what the value is. We'll just do this by appending the string. Now, as you can see, we have a nicely formatted temperature value on the right-hand side. Let's rinse and repeat this for the left-hand side axis with the number of ice cream sales, but rather than appending a string on the end, we'll parse it as a float and then use the to locale string format function in order to format our values for us. And that's it. We now have a completely formatted combination chart built with AG charts in React in just under 80 lines of code. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we hope you enjoy our product. Thanks for watching.